Hey y'all, it's Andrew Catch here, and this Tidy Tuesday video, we're not going to be going over this week's data set. Instead, I wanted to make a series where we basically start a project from scratch and complete it. Uh, and we're going to do this basically in three videos. Um, I wanted to make three parts. One, where we basically go over the project setup, uh, data collection, and data cleaning. My second video I'm planning on doing is just like the feature engineering and the modeling. And then the third part will be basically deploying it and creating an app uh, using our shiny. So I thought it'd be interesting, uh, especially since I have about 48 videos uh, since I started the Tidy Tuesday project. So I thought making three videos on, you know, showing how to start up a project and finish it. And then for my last video for that for the year would be uh, a Q&A. So in the description below, there will be a link to a Google uh, sheets link so you can ask me a question uh, for my q a video i did notice that some of the questions were more mostly about like video suggestions um that's not really what the q a video is going to be about so um mostly about like you know about data science itself not really what i'm planning on making so i'm just a little heads up for uh if you're going to submit any questions because i probably will not answer any uh video ideas uh so yeah that's being said um i wanted to create a UFC sports betting model. So in between uh, jobs, when I uh, accepted a position as a data scientist, I basically had about a month off before I started my position. So during that month, I, I did some traveling. And then I also wanted to start, I all started a small little project. So I started up a UFC sports betting model. And actually in the scripts, um, I did get uh, pretty far into it. Um, last weekend, I was actually uh, organizing it. And I can't densing the scripts. So I've already done a decent amount of work for this project. So I think what will be good about this um, video series or this three part series is we're not running really a go uh, where I'm like improv doing improv and coding itself. I'm kind of going over the steps and the ideas that go behind it and how you can really approach these problems when you're starting your own uh, side project. I will also say that you guys can definitely just, you know, do a uh, and fork this repo. Uh, I have a. I have the repo actually in the Tidy Tuesday project. Uh, so you don't really have to go into my other repos, but um, I'm totally fine with you guys forking it, you know, building upon it and stuff like that. I will say though, if you're gonna like, you know, put it uh, put out s somewhere in public uh, to give me some credit. Um, I think that's basically it, but you can do whatever you want. Um, just uh, give me some credit. So when you're actually starting a project, the, uh, the first thing you have to do is actually create a project. Uh, so I think when you're doing it, you should always create, you know, a little folder that will have your project. In this case, we're putting in the Tidy Tuesday repo and I'm calling it the Tidy Tuesday UFC project. So I created an R project using um, R Studio, uh, and that way you can set your directory to that and you just click on this and it'll kind of open it up to your own set directory. Uh, it'll make it like an R project that user, which I'm fine with. Uh, I don't think I have anything like classified or anything like that. I think it's fine, but I see if there's any problem with it, uh, I'll make sure to remove it. But generally when I'm making a project or I'm starting a project like at work or by myself, I'll generally create two folders, one folder for my data and one folder for my scripts. So when you're actually starting a project, you need to find a data source and hopefully this data source isn't um, easily attainable. So if it's an easy, easily attainable source, then you really want to focus on the analysis part of it. But most, most of the time, uh, you're trying to start a project where uh, you want to grab the data itself, either from web scraping or requesting through an API. Um, in this case, it's pretty easy to get UFC data. Um, I went to ufcstats.com. Uh, you go to like events and fights. I marked completed. And then when I scroll down, you can see that there's an all. And now we have a page where it's all of the cards of all of the UFC fights. So right now we have a bunch of links to all these cards. And what I wanted to do is basically scrape every fight that the UFC has ever promoted with all of the data. So right now when we click into a card, we have a summary of all the fights. And if we actually like click on these like uh, cards or these individual fights on the card, we can see that we get a little bit more um, detail in the actual fight itself. So we have, you know, knockdown, significant strikes, significant strike percentages. Um, we also have, you know, per round, stuff like that. Um, all the stuff. We also have like method of KO, uh, method of win. So 
KO TKO round one time 117 a time format no time limit etc so when I was looking at this uh, there's it almost follows a hierarchy so we have a a card a fight and then a fight detail and with the fights we really don't want to to me I didn't really need to worry about scraping these individual components because the fight details has most of these components so I was fine with basically ignoring this and just using this to scrape the actual fight links. Okay. Um, so I'm not really going to go over the actual web scraping for it. Uh, I'll definitely show you what I did for it and kind of explain what I was thinking about. But one of the most important things when you're doing these types of projects is we know that this data is going to be a little dynamic. So what that means is um, every month or two, there's going to be another card where we would like to scrape that data. Uh, to be used in future pipelines, right? So right now we know that in on February 6th, there's going to be UFC fight night. So we would like to scrape that card once it finishes. Um, so I'm going to look load up my data scraping script. So this is going to be the script that's basically going to um, scrape all of the, um, the data. What we actually want to do is kind of just scrape, you know, the raw data and not do any cleaning with it. So that way we will we'll always have some type of you know backup uh, for our project. So right now what I basically loaded in was you know RVest, which is the uh, web scraping, uh, Tidyverse, the here package, which I've been using for the past few months, which is very useful, uh, especially with working with directories in R. So right now, like instead of typing all of that um, directory nonsense, right? If I look up right here, so if I do like a schooled uh, folder, our work, tidy Tuesday, tidy Tuesday, USC project scripts. Instead, I can just use here, which would do the actual main directory, which will be the tidy Tuesday UFC project. So that makes it a little bit simpler uh, when you're trying to load in a data set or even write a data set to your uh, project folders. In this case, we'd probably want to write most of our stuff to our data folder. Okay. So what I basically did was wrote a few functions to scrape uh, the links. So the first one is going to be scraping the cards. Additionally, I have one that will scrape the dates from the cards. Then I'll scrape uh, the fights, which are like for each card, we have like 11 or 12 fights. And then using those fight links, we're going to scrape the actual summary data, which is where most of the meat and potatoes are at, right? Because we want to scrape each, we want to uh, scrape you know, the summary data. So the total uh, submi submission attempts, significant strikes, fighter name, etc. The details, so uh, you know, win loss, round finish, etc. Um, I also wrote a, a function to basically get round by round data, but in this case, I didn't actually use it uh, to for the analysis, especially since we're going to do a model. So for me, I would rather just kind of make it a little bit simpler and just you know, instead of predict round by round stuff or even use round by round data, just kind of keep it a little bit simpler and keep it on a fight level. And then uh, next, we're actually going to go over like the actual scraping. So if we actually remove all of these little functions and like condense them. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory, right? We have our scraping functions that we're going to be using to actually scrape. Uh, and then uh, we can actually scrape it. So I wrote this all so it's pretty pipeable and it actually follows a hierarchy. So first we have our UFC page, which is like the page of all of the card links. Then we basically scrape all the cards, then using all the cards, uh, we scrape all the dates, and then after that, we scrape all the fights from, the, from that stuff, right? So once we have basically our, our fight links, which is basically what we want, because um, that's how a granular we're gonna get, I actually set up a progress bar, so that way we can actually scrape the actual fight data. Um, I'm not gonna go over this yet, but I wanna say that uh, once you actually scrape all this stuff, uh, this this function actually takes a long time if you're going to start from scratch because you're going to be essentially scraping like, I don't know, a couple thousand fights, and that'll take a long time. So what I actually have is I have the raw data that we've previously scraped right here, and we're going to use that data basically to say like if we've already scraped this card, we're just going to remove that card from our scraping queue, and then we're actually going to scrape the fights. So there's no card to scrape it'll give an error but i'm probably just going to manually run this because there's no really set schedule for fights obviously fights are always going to happen on saturday but sometimes you know it's not going to be every other saturday if that's going to happen so for me i'm fine with running it 
uh, whenever I need to basically update my data set, which I'll probably be running, you know, maybe once a month uh, because most fighters aren't going to be fighting on the same like twice in a month. So you're fine with running it basically once a month and, and getting away with it. So I actually removed uh, the most recent fight, which was the Conor McGregor uh, Dustin Poirier fight. So let's actually run this function right here and kind of go over uh, what, what I was thinking about doing. Okay. So we ran all this stuff and we can see that's actually scraping the card, right? And then we have it where it's writing out the new data set right here, which is the fight data raw.csv and that'll be loaded in the future. So when we actually look at this, um, let's see right here, we can see all of these, um, all of this stuff. When we actually do a, a view there. So right here we have, we can actually look at this hierarchy where we have the UFC page, which will be the same for all of the cards. Then we have the actual card uh, link, which has all the fights. We have the card date right here. And then for um, each card, we we're scraping the fight details. And then when we see the fight details, here are the actual things that we're, uh, we're grabbing. So we're getting a fighter, his or her knockdowns, significant strike landed, Signing strike attempts, etc., and then it switches over to fighter two. We have that, and it's basically the same uh, metrics, right? Just uh, replaced with fighter two. Then we have the method of one, so KO, TKO. Uh, then we have round finished time format referee, the fighter fighter one res, and the fighter two res. So sorry if you haven't watched the fight. Um, I kind of spoiled it for you, but uh, it, I think you probably saw in the news if you didn't see it. Um, so as you can see, that data is pretty dirty. It's not great for actual modeling, but we can actually use it, um, uh, to actually clean our data. So right now I'm actually going to go and open up our clean, our data cleaning script. And this is where we're actually cleaning the data. Um, most of it is just kind of renaming stuff, converting things into factors, um, parsing dates, removing redundant things that we don't really need for the model. So in this case, we don't really need like the page links, the card link and the fight link. Oh, we also want to like, you know, rename all the fields and stuff like that. I also did a, sl a slight amount of feature engineering. So, you know, I'm just creating like percentages. So like, you know, total strikes landed divided by total strike attempted, et cetera. Um, so stuff like that, where I was, uh, I was, I was changing a few things. Um, and then we have some gender stuff where I had to do some regular expressions. Um, additionally, uh, sometimes when the weight class was missing, we, I looked it up and found that it was usually just catch weights uh, that were missing, stuff like that. Uh, sometimes there, were re there was no referee, so I had to uh, remove that. But in the end, I don't, wasn't really planning on using the referee itself, although I do think that would be kind of interesting to model out like referee bias. Um, and then I actually did some, you know, again, the same type of cleaning where it's mostly just renaming, removing unnecessary things because I'm basically renaming all this other stuff and kind of sorting everything out. So really, I don't want to go over all of this code because it's really just kind of redundant cleaning. Um, it's not too interesting. And it's something that everyone has a different approach to doing. It's just how I wanted to do it because, you know, I was going to use this data for myself. Um, but I will say one of the main things I want to show you is that we're not really manip we're, we're, we're using our raw data that we scraped, but we're not actually overwriting that data. Instead, we have this, you know, fight data raw.csv. But after all the cleaning, we're actually creating um, our fight data, which is like the cleaned version of it. So that is to basically prevent anything um, from interrupting the flow. So you, have, you kind of have to think of it as like a downstream effect where this is like our raw data that we don't want to uh, corrupt at all. And then we have our fight data, which will be basically data we're going to be using that is cleaned and used for most of the feature engineering and modeling. So. Now that we've already designed all of our, um, our project, we kind of have to think about, um, you know, how we can reproduce this for, um, you know, if we want to do anything more. So I'm actually going to go back to the, uh, was it the data scraping and kind of go over, um, some of the functions now and explain my thinking. So most of these, uh, I guess most of these, uh, HTML things was just using the combination of, um, Inspector gadget, the was it the inspector gadget thing, the uh, selector the selector gadget um, tool, 
and also just kind of inspecting the HTML. Um, one of the things that I think is good with this, um, this uh, um, data scraping script is that it's very tidy. Um, so basically I'm using um, the mapping functions to use for all the, the list of page links from a given hierarchy of cards. We're basically using that to, to scrape the cards. And then we're basically kind of like removing any cards that we've already scraped. Then we're also doing the general scraping functions. Um, I will say that adding a progress bar towards to your actual scraping functions is very useful, uh, especially since uh, you do, uh, when you're giving it to people, um, such as like you guys itself, um, it would definitely cause a lot of problems where um, if I didn't have a progress bar or you couldn't see like how many fights have been scraped, uh, people would probably cancel the actual scraping function because the scraping function takes a long time. So adding this really helps users understand, you know, what's going on and also just writing functions that are um, pretty self-explanatory. So none of these card, none of these um, objects are very confusing, right? We have like our UFC page, which you can kind of read like, okay, these are like all the events, et cetera. We have scrape cards, which is scraping the fight card links. And we have the anti-join using our previous scrape cards. So it says remove cards that have already been scraped. Then we have our scrape card dates and then scrape fights from every fight card. So um, that uses, like again, the same functions, scrape dates, scrape fights. Finally, we do the actual progress bar. And then we do the, using the fight data, we actually scrape the fight summary data. Um, I did wrap um, safely around the mapping function. And that's because there's, when you're, especially when you're doing a lot of web scraping, that can run into some errors where, you know, it might return a null. In this case, safety will kind of just ignore it. So with that, it'll kind of give you um, a better way where, you know, if you're scraping, you know, 4,000 4, fights and then, you know, one of the fights uh, returns something that, that your, your actual web scraping functions couldn't really understand. It's not just going to stop everything and you're not going to lose all of your progress. Instead, it's going to continue trudging on and you might just have one error in one fight and that's fine. So that's basically it for this video. I know this video wasn't very interesting because it's most about the projects, but um, we actually look at on my own repo, um, what we will start focusing on, which will probably be the mo most important part of this project is the actual modeling part. So you see I have the feature engineering, feature engineering and modeling done. So next week we're gonna be focusing on you know, think about what type of features you want to create for a model and also just what models you want to use, not from an algorithmic standpoint, but on a model structure standpoint. So we're going to go over maybe like multi-headed models. I'm figuring out like how many, should we use multiple models that, uh, to break multiple components or is it better to just put everything together in one single model and it's like uh, predict the outcome. So we're going to go over a lot of like modeling frameworks and model ideas uh, for the next week's video, which will be very fun, and I'm going to be uh, trying to finish that up probably uh, next week. So with that being said, uh, I'll see you guys next week, and Teddy on.